it's really late at night while I'm recording this. It's just me and the dogs about. So sorry if my voice is a little bit um, quieter than normal. Uh, I don't want to wake everybody up in the house. Um, it's been a little bit difficult going back into my studio as many of you that follow my YouTube and other social media know that my dad died not very long ago and it's been a little bit hard going into the studio and being inspired basically. Um, it is one of the most difficult things because art really does heal and art really does give you a respite away from the things that are going on in the everyday but when something major happens a life-changing thing happens it's really really hard to be motivated and um, this is one of the things that I um, advocate quite um, a lot is use your art to heal and inspiration um, comes from the most amazing places or unlikely places and the inspiration for this piece came from my friend Anna May and Anna May has been a rock um, in this storm of emotions and she never fails to make me laugh and giggle and under normal circumstances we spend all our time giggling and mucking about. She is actually one of my students from my print workshops that I run in my hometown in Swindon with my um, great mate Alex. And um, Anna Mae doesn't live very far from me so I give her a lift to the um, community centre where I run these workshops and we spend an awful lot of time giggling and laughing and mucking about. Anyway, as I said, she is one of my rocks and after a print workshop the other day we went to have lunch, which is something we do sometimes. And this particular time we decided that we would have lunch in a cafe that we um, have in one of our garden centres. And this cafe is an amazing place. It's called Twigs. And it has a Facebook page and I'm sure you can look it up if you so wish to. But this place is brilliant because it is run by volunteers and the volunteers all suffer some kind of anxiety, depression, stress and they are on the road to recovery and there are two things that Twigs do. They run a gardening program and also a cafe and the cafe is the Olive Cafe and this is where me and Anna Mae went to because we as a community do like to um, be very much involved and support these projects and like I say the volunteers are people on the road to recovery and they learn how to cook and serve people and interact back into society and it is an amazing place but it is also attached to a run-of-the-mill garden center and like most garden centers it is um, well in the UK anyway it has an, an eclectic um, stock besides just plants and garden plants and me and Anna May were going around the garden centre and as usual turned into two giggling schoolgirls and um, 
we were looking at some of the garden ornaments which were to be honest quite horrendous <laughs> there was a couple of lions that obviously came as a pair and um, I would imagine that you would put them either in front of your gate as guard lions or in front of your front door but these poor unfortunate lions looked more like dogs and Sidon looked like they'd had their teeth taken out <laughs> so he looked rather gummy and in England we have a thing called gurning and if anybody from Cornwall knows what's this, what this is I mean I do think that they do it north of the UK as well it's where people take out their false teeth and pull funny faces a bit like Popeye and these unfortunate lions side on did look like Popeye and had their teeth removed and me and Anna Mae were wetting ourselves because you know like, they're so far removed from being ferocious guard lions and then we stumbled across in the bushes these unfortunate penguin that had no eyes I mean what would possess you to buy a penguin with no eyes I have no idea anyway we were walking back into the garden into the shop part of the garden center and we saw a toucan and me and Anna Mae both said how much we like toucans and they are amazing birds and suddenly I had this flash of inspiration and I remembered some wallpaper that I had back in my studio which were cheese plant pattern. Now if anybody knows cheese plants, they were very popular in the 70s. They are the most amazing plants. They, I mean, people in hot countries and rainforests, I mean these plants grow huge. but we don't really see the benefit over here because we don't have that kind of climate and unless they're in a greenhouse or a hot house environment we don't actually get to see them in their full glory but these cheese plants are amazing because they grow these huge leaves that are sort of heart shaped and then all of a sudden they just split and have these amazing holes just like cheese and I had ferreted around one of our wallpaper stores and like every good artist I do kind of take samples <laughs> I mean I don't know what the store must think they must think I must be painting every room in our town because I ferret along and find some interesting patterns and then rip off a little bit has a sample and one of the pieces I came across was this amazing wallpaper which was actually a cheese plant and I thought do you know what I'm going to do a toucan just to remember the amazing day and my amazing friend Anna Mae that has been with me all through this um, very sad event in my life and so I decided to look at these toucans and it was quite amazing really because I didn't realize that toucans came in so many colors their bills are from green yellow blue you know all kinds of colors and um, so that that was pretty awesome to see as well but one of the most disturbing things that I did see when I was doing my research was the there are quite a few pictures posted on um, images and these poor birds had their top bill broken I mean I have no idea how this happens or why it's happened but it was really strange to see such a magnificent bird with his bill broken off quite near his um, head or nose I'm assuming 
So I did find that quite disturbing. But um, I did manage to find a couple of images I liked. So this is inspired by a couple of the images that I saw. And um, I must say, um, my friend Anna May, she is um, quite a famous person in her own right. She is actually a poet and she's published and um, she writes some amazing poetry and she's been trying to encourage me to write some poems as well, um, which I found a little bit daunting, but I'm kind of getting into the swing of it. And um, we have another amazing place, which I have got a YouTube, which I will put in at the end of this video, of the Richard Jeffries Museum. Now, the Richard Jeffries Museum is exactly what it is. It's a house or the home of Richard Jeffries, who is a famous poet in Swindon in 1800 and something and his cottage still stands and an amazing group of people are working tirelessly tirelessly to keep it going and keep it alive and one of the things they do there are poetry workshops and so I am dipping my toe into poetry so you never know one of my YouTubes I might actually <laughs> be reading you one of my poems um, in my print workshops uh, we are a mixture of people poets writers um, illustrators and artists and one of the things that we are doing is looking at a piece of work and um, or three pieces of work, either a poem, um, a page from a book, or a, a magazine article, anything that's word driven, and to illustrate it, which we are finding quite exciting at the moment. And one of the poems that I have illustrated is a poem. I did about my fish hat so I may show you that and the picture at a later date and at the moment what I'm doing is I'm doing a print of another poem that I've written these are only really short poems maybe seven or eight lines and what I like to do is I like to do embossing so maybe I might actually show you that as well so um, yeah I'm not actually been looking at my toucan coming into fruition I do like drawing these lovely bright colors and I, I do hope you can hear my voice over the music um, I thought I would put some jolly music on his the background to this piece. I'm just using ordinary acrylics for this piece. Um, unfortunately, the paper that I used wasn't high quality paper. I had a pad and it's got uh, about two pieces of paper left in and I decided to use those and, it, and it's not the usual paper that I use it's not as good quality cartridge paper so it did buckle a little bit under the under the strain but one of the things that I was quite surprised about when I was researching toucans was they've only got three toes isn't that amazing? I didn't know that. They have two toes at the front and one toe at the back. So yeah, that was a little bit of insight. There he is. It's beginning to come alive a little bit. I think one of the things that I think is quite true, I was watching a, another 
YouTuber and um, they were saying that sometimes you know they have no inspiration and they go out and about and it's not always easy but actually being out and about does kind of give you inspiration and I, I do believe that that if you do um, leave your house or even go in your garden something will attract your attention and take your mind off of whatever it is that you are thinking about or going through just like the toucan did for me all of a sudden when I spotted the toucan on the shelf everything kind of fell into place and I remembered the wallpaper and the colours and it, in a way the toucan is quite symbolic um, maybe to what I'm going through I don't know I mean his main body is black you know most of it's black but through this blackness comes these vibrant beautiful colors and that is quite amazing so this is quite symbolic that no matter how dark or sad or hopeless a situation may feel to you there is always a little bit of colour that will shine through and it will shine through and you will not have any control over that you know you will find yourself laughing or thinking about things that you want to do even if you've had a bereavement like I have you know so just give yourself a little bit of time and do go out and do be part of the world because something will tap you on the shoulder and before you know it a pencil will be in your hand now these white pens that I'm using are actually Uniball white pens and do you know what they're one of the best ones that I've actually come across um, I've tried gel pens nightmare uh, Posca pens sometimes but if you want a white pen that never lets you down use a Uniball signal pen and even the Uniball black pen are pretty awesome so I'm just trying to create the curve on his beak where the light will shine. It is really important as well, I can't stress it enough, that when you actually do draw something you are giving information to the viewer and you are not never going to draw something that's flat because most things aren't flat. So you have to try and show every curve, dent, line, edge and so when you apply the paint to the paper try and visualize you going over the contours of the shape or body and that gives the viewer the concept of form. Hello there he is and um, that's what I'm trying to do on this beak is to show the contours of the beak because it, I think it's one of the main, well, the biggest feature of this bird and now I've stuck him on the back of the wallpaper and I've also um, because the wallpaper is obviously somebody else's concept I've obviously also cut and redesigned and replaced um, the cheese plant leaves in different areas and I'm applying household paint emulsion to the background to make it blue just to make it more of my design rather than their design 
and I think he fits in there quite well. I mean, always keep your eyes out for little bits of scrap paper, and and if you do use scrap paper and or somebody else's design, try and change it a little bit more to be your design. Oh, and another thing that I use as well is I use Yes Paste. Um, Sharon Green told me told on her YouTube channel what an amazing um, glue this is, and it is. And I don't use Mod Podge very often because this is almost sticks instantaneously, and it doesn't wrinkle and buckle a lot like lots of other glues. So I know that I can't, can't say that enough that yes paste is the way forward. It, it's a little bit difficult to get hold of, so I do get mine from Amazon. I, it, I, I don't know in America or other places you can find it, but in Britain it is a little bit difficult. It is a little bit expensive, but it lasts for ages, so yeah. And now I'm just shading him to kind of make him pop out from the leaves. I rather like the idea that the leaves are quite pencilly and different to to him. He's quite bright and he's he's not lost in the background of colour. He's still sitting sitting there quite happily with it in the with the background, but the background is still quite 3D. Again, changing the background to how I want it, to how it is originally, making it my own. I live in the wood there's no street lights and there's no cars and I've been out working and I've, I've came back a little while ago well a while ago now look at the clock and the hustle and bustle of the town and I got out the car and I walked down a little lane to where I live and it's so so quiet and so dark. The only light is from the sky. So peaceful. And just sitting here now, it really late at night, and the dogs are sat oh, next to me and on the floor. And uh, everybody's asleep. So peaceful. It's not often I get to do a um, narration without somebody walking, banging, dogs barking. So I'm making the most of it. And I'm going to have a cup of tea afterwards while this loads and edit it. So anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this as I enjoyed making it and stepping back in my studio for a little bit. So I'm just going to say... Please like, subscribe, thumbs up, and we'd love you to comment, and hopefully see you in not the too much distant future. So take care, and love to everybody. Now he is up on the screen. <laughs> Mr. Tugan. Bye-bye.